so spine and trunk muscles. But before we do that, we have to create our word bank. Right? In order to create our word bank, we need to understand what joints we're going after. So the first thing we have to go over is the spine. We need to break down the spine. So we have cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae. You guys with me? Cervical, thoracic, lumbar. Let me draw a little picture of Slim here. Head, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, pelvis, rib cage. Slim does not have great posture in this picture. So cervical, what, what are the cervical vertebrae? What would layman's terms for the cervical vertebrae be? Yeah, so these are your neck vertebrae. What about your thoracic vertebrae? What's special about your thoracic vertebrae? The rib cage. So your thoracic vertebrae are those vertebrae that connect to a rib. And what about lumbar? What's the, what's the layman's team term? Yeah, lumbar, low back. I have not had enough coffee this morning. All right, that's a good start. At least we know the three different portions of the spine. Now we have to know how many vertebrae are in each one. All right? How do you, do you guys know how to figure this out? You guys ever heard breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah? You know what the funniest thing about the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, dinner analogy is, right? When was the last time anybody had breakfast at 7, lunch at 12, and dinner at 5? I don't think anybody does that anymore. But if you think about like the, the old school of you work 9 to 5, you get up, you have breakfast at 7, you have your lunch break at 12, you come home and eat dinner, that helps make sense. Of course, none of us actually do that. I get that. The thing I find interesting about that is it's the same for all mammals. You guys are about to find out. I watch way too much Discovery Channel. And you guys are still probably thinking to yourself, great, it happens in all mammals. All mammals. Giraffes. How many cervical vertebrae? Seven. Seven. They're just like this high. Each. And then you compare that to a shrew. You ever seen a shrew? It's like a mouse without a neck. Right? What about whales? Whales are mammals, right? Same. And they're really long. So I'm guessing those vertebrae are really big. And then I was at the airport in Chicago. Has anybody ever been to the airport in Chicago? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to talk about? There's a giant brontosaurus skeleton replica oh, yeah. for like no reason <laughs> in the Chicago airport. I have no idea why it's there. But I'm going through security. I'm walking, and I just look up and I go, what? And so I started looking at it, because it's obviously a replica. And sure enough, how many cervical vertebrae in a brontosaurus? Seven. Seven. And they have like the same landmarks, like the vertebrae are pretty much shaped the same. There was like some differences as far as the attachments and, and the little protuberances and stuff, but still seven, 12, 12 ribs. I counted out the ribs. I must have looked like such a freak. I'm just in the, in the middle of the Chicago airport. Seven, twelve, five. Everyone. Now, the other thing you guys have to know is the curves. How do we figure out the curves? Concave, convex, concave. Right, right. I get what you're saying. Concave, convex, concave. But there's a name for those in the back, right? So, anybody know what the one in the lumbar spine is called? It's a lordotic curve. All right. I 
I always make this letter association. My low back is my lumbar spine, which has a lordotic curve, LLL. Thoracic is what? A kyphosis or a kyphotic curve. You guys ever heard that term kyphosis? Yeah, all a kyphosis is referring to is an excessive kyphotic curve. There's supposed to be a kyphotic curve there. It's just how much. Obviously, this would be excessive. We see this, unfortunately. Is that why there's a monkey curve just to describe the position there? Mm hmm. You're saying as far as the lordosis, kyphosis? Yeah, like what? Yeah. Yeah, it's just describing the, the curve. What is this going to be? The same as the bottom. This is the lordotic curve. Are you guys going to be testing on that? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Does that help you guys memorize all that little information? Now the question is, we've got to make our word bank, right, before we look at the muscles? All right. Word bank. For the most part, the muscles we look at are going to be in the lumbar spine or across the lumbar spine. Anybody want to take a guess at the joint type? I said it yesterday. Cool. Uh, which type of, of synovial joint are we looking at? The, you, got, you remember the different types of mechanical? Gliding. 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 That's what I was looking for, right? What type of movements does gliding joints do? You guys remember? It's like pretty, yeah, it's planar. So it's like a lot of small movements in a lot of different directions. What are some joints you guys know we have at the spine? What are some joint actions? I'm sorry. What are some, some joint actions that you know we have at the spine? Rotation. You know we have rotation. You know we have extension. Flexion. And lateral flexion. Just a note on rotation, guys. There's no internal and external rotation of the spine. Right? It's center. There's no, what, no place for it to move in and out of. Does anybody know what we usually refer to when we're talking about which direction the spine rotates? Huh? Midline, like, but if I turn this way, how do I tell people that I turned this way? It's right, yeah, so it's, it's right and left rotation. When we talk specifically about muscles, we, you will hear the terms Ipsilateral and contralateral. Have you guys heard those terms? Yeah. So ipsilateral is same. Right? So if I'm, if I'm talking about my obliques, and we'll get to this in a second, the one that turns, turns me towards the side the muscle is on would be what? Ipsilateral. The one that turns me away from the side the muscle is on is contralateral. contralateral. Good. So that's all of our joint actions. That's not, not that bad, right? Same thing with lateral flexion. Lateral flexion is lateral flexion, ipsilateral, contralateral, or lateral flexion right and left. Um, for rotation for the ipsilateral, contralateral, you will only use those two, those two for the lumbar spine, like for instance. Yeah. Like, can you use that for any other joint? Really? Sure. Sure, you can say ipsilateral and contralateral for any of the, any, all of the spinal column, right? If we're talking about the shoulder, what types of rotation are we going to talk about? 
internal and external rotation, so we don't need those terms. When we're talking about something centered that doesn't have an inside and an outside, right? It doesn't have a midline or it can't go towards the midline. We have to use ipsilateral, contralateral, or as you guys have already shown how simple it is, it's right and left. Make sense? Cool, so we got our word bank. We understand what we're moving. Now we just got to get through the muscles, which after all of the work we put in yesterday, you guys are going to crush this in, I'm, I'm guessing, about 10 minutes. <laughs>